Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series of Azure Active Directory. In the last video, we configured conditional access policies in Azure Active Directory. In this particular video, we will be talking about B2B collaboration. We will discuss how B2B collaboration works, how to invite external users to your Azure AD tenant, and how to assign services to the external users. B2B collaboration is a feature of Azure AD external identities. If we go by definition, B2B collaboration allows you to invite external users to your organization and let them use your organization services. So let's understand how does B2B collaboration work. Let's assume this is your Azure AD tenant and this is an external organization or let's say this is your partner organization and the users from the partner organization wants to access the resources those are hosted in your Azure AD tenant. So the administrator of your tenant will create a guest user in Azure Active Directory. When this user will be created in your Azure AD tenant, the type of the user account will be guest. Identity will be your initial domain. That means domain.onmicrosoft.com and the user principal name of this guest user will be username hash ext hash at domain.onmicrosoft.com and one more thing this account will not have any credentials associated because when this user will access the resources of your organization this account will be authenticated by his own organization your azure ad tenant will not authenticate this user so when administrator will create this user as a guest user, an invitation email will be sent to this user. Then this user will accept the invitation and the identity type that was reflecting as domain.onmicrosoft.com will change to the name of the external organization. I will show you this practically as well and things will be more clear. In the next step, the administrator of your organization will assign services or the licenses to this user. When this user will try to access the services of your tenant, the authentication request will go to the external organization. And once the user is authenticated, he will be able to access your organization's resources. Remember one thing, in case of B2B collaboration, the authentication is performed by the organization where the user account is hosted. Now, if you want, you can add a conditional access policy on this guest user. For example, when this guest user will try to access your organization's resources, he should be prompted for MFA. So this way you can secure the communication between the guest user and your company resources. So this is how B2B collaboration works. In order to use B2B collaboration, you need Azure AD Premium P1 license and you need an account that has global administrator privileges assigned. So now let's move towards our lab and let's configure B2B collaboration. For this demo, I'm using one external account that is using Outlook.com. So the user is concepts user at Outlook.com. I'm going to send invitation to this particular user. So let's go to Azure Active Directory, go to users. If you want to add one external user or you want to invite a guest user, you will click new user and then you will click invite external user. Make sure invite user is selected. Here we will type the display name of the user account. For example, in my case, it's concepts user. Email address will be the external email address of the user. For example, this one concepts user at outlook.com. First name, last name. In personal message, you will type a message that you want to send to this user within the invitation email. So you can type a message. For example, hello, we are pleased to invite you to our organization. 
please accept this invitation for example you can modify this as per your business requirement and next add usage location and then click invite so it says successfully invited user concepts user now let's go to the mailbox of this user let's refresh so we have received this invitation so it says sender this is the global administrator account of my azure ad tenant this is the name of my azure ad tenant office 365 concepts this is my initial domain now this is the invitation message so this is the same message that we entered within the personal message while creating the guest user so it says we are pleased to invite you to our organization please accept this invitation now this user has this option this button to accept this invitation so now this user will click accept invitation and before that let me show you one more thing let me refresh the page so when this user was created as of now we can see identities is set to office 365 concepts dot on microsoft.com and this is the user principal name concepts user outlook.com hash ext hash at domain dot on microsoft.com and the user type of this account is guest now let's accept this invitation you need to allow the permissions for azure active directory so the invitation is accepted now let's go back to Azure Active Directory. Let me refresh. And now you can see identities is changed to Microsoft account because outlook.com also belongs to Microsoft. So that is the reason it says Microsoft account. If external account belongs to Facebook or Gmail, then you will see the name according to the external organization. Now we have accepted the invitation and the identities is changed. Now the next part is as an administrator, we will assign services or the licenses to this user. So go to licenses, assignments, and select the license that you want to assign to this user. Click save. License is assigned. Now let's log out from here. Close this as well. Now let's try to access portal.office.com using outlook.com account. So it's concepts user at outlook.com. So we are accessing portal.office.com. Let's close this. So here I can see all the services, all the applications assigned to this user as per the license assigned. Now, if you go to account, it says concepts user at outlook.com. That is the external identity. So this user has got these services, but the authentication for this particular account will be taken care of by outlook.com organization. So let's go back to Azure Active Directory. Let's close this and let's create one conditional access policy for external user. Go to security, conditional access, new policy, and let's give it a name, MFA for guest users. Under users or workload identities, we will select guest users and we will go to cloud apps and here let's add a couple of applications for example office 365 and let's add azure as well select applications are added go to grant 
and let's assign grant access with required multi-factor authentication. Turn on the policy and click create. So this policy is created. Let's close this session. Open new window. Let's open portal.azure.com, for example, and let's log in with same external user. Let's enter password. So the authentication is done. Now I should get prompt. Now it says your organization needs more information to keep your account secure. Before making changes to your security info, you must complete multi-factor authentication. So now conditional access policy is triggering on this account and this user will have to enroll himself for the multi-factor authentication. So let's click next. Scan the QR code. So the authentication part is done and user has successfully enrolled for MFA and now here you can see this user is logged in in Azure portal as well. So this is how B2B collaboration works and this is how you invite external users to your organization and external users can access the resources of your organization. In the next video, we will understand how to analyze audit logs and sign in logs in Azure Active Directory. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.